Road Talk, brought to you by RACT and the Road Safety Advisory Council. It's a pleasant winter's afternoon. Kate and her two children are driving home after a Saturday afternoon soccer game. Everything is as it would be on any other given day. But what if, for a moment, Kate is distracted? Let's see what can so easily happen. Two-year-old Oliver in the back seat is badly shaken, but he's unhurt. His 10-year-old sister is not so lucky. The impact of the crash means that she's paralysed. Worse still, her mum Kate will die before the ambulance can get there. Is there a way to understand this type of crash and stop it happening again? We make mistakes every day in almost everything we do. So we need to design our vehicles and our roads to make sure that we accommodate the errors that we make. We've come to realise it's not just about behaviour. It's about how behaviour interacts with the traffic system, with the way we've designed the roads, and with the vehicles we put everyone in, and then the speeds at which we travel. And we call it the safe system. Safer vehicles, safer roads, safer road users, and safer speeds. Not all roads are created equal. This road, for example, has no centre line, no edge lines, no seal shoulder, fall offs on the road edge, and so it's been reduced to 80 kilometres an hour. But lots of rural roads in Tasmania have not. They stay at the default of 100. We as drivers must adapt to the level of safety built into the road we drive. Kate was actually in a pretty old car that had very few crash-worthy features, and that's why there was so much injury. She was on a road that had very few safety features, and she struck a tree that didn't have to be there, or at least could have been guarded by guardrail. So there were things that the safe system would have done. She herself made an error. She was distracted, she turned around, which is one of those common errors that we talked about. It's not about reducing speeds, it is about matching the speed to the road condition you've got in front of you. 